Welcome back, guys. Uh, it's been a while. All right, so I'm going to do something a little different for this video. It's going to be because I've had quite a few questions about if um, we could do Greg's uh, systems with TradingView. So I'm going to take a little time here and try to um, piece together his systems using TradingView. It, the only issue that I run into is that you can't combine these bottom indicators here with uh, in TradingView that I know of, I, unless you could write your own script or something like that. But so, for example, uh, with his quant system, he's got three different indicators all on top of each other. Uh, whereas here, you know, they just stack. I can't, I can't add these two lower indicators together so that you can kind of uh, have them overlay, overlap each other. So that's one issue that you have with TradingView that I've run into. Uh, the other one is, as far as his quant system goes, I had some requests to put together the quant. You can do Renko bars in TradingView. Uh, Renko is right here, but you got to have the upgraded version, so you're going to have to pay some money um, for that. That's okay for you guys that can't get Think or Swim if you're out of the U.S. or whatever. Um, but the next thing is you can't do uh, charts by tick. So with Think or Swim, he uses the quant system with uh, certain tick sizes. It works, works really well with the Renko bars. Uh, you can only do time ranges, so it's only based on minutes and seconds and uh, hours, you know, that kind of thing. So you, it's not going to be the same. So you can piece together a quant system. It's just not going to be, in, you know, near as good as the one you can do in Thinkorswim just because of that reason. You can't do the tick chart. But I am going to put together the swing system here, um, just a different version of it. You guys can mess with these systems. Like Greg only puts together a really nice system. Uh, he makes it as easy and simple as possible. I've got my own way, so I'm just going to kind of show you my way. You guys can take it or leave it. Uh, but I do use some of the principles um, that he had built together. Like what I like that he does here is um, I love how he uses the Helkinashi bars. Okay, we'll just start with the the, the candlesticks essentially. Uh, the you know these Helkinashi. I love how he uses those. Hollow them out. And so with Thinkorswim or with uh, TradingView, you can come up here to this little gearbox and um, come in here for the symbol, and you can see how you can fill in the body or make it hollow. I love how it's hollow. I just it just looks really good, and I don't like the wicks either. The Helkinashi wicks are really weird; they throw you off. So I like to get rid of those as well. Um, and then using white for down for some reason psychologically, it's just less intimidating to see the white pullback versus a red one right so we, like when you see the red pullback you you know you're just like oh boy here we go uh, but so I, I like how we use white there because uh, it's just less intimidating it just looks like something you should buy more than um, getting nervous so helps with that I like uh, trading view as well because you can put in these high low prices so for the chart so now we can see kind of like what the high is for the chart and the low. Uh, and then uh, you can also put the average close line, which I think is interesting. So this is the average close. So uh, another thing I like, so the next thing is, um, so on his swing system, let's just go through some of the basics here. He does a Bollinger Band. He also has Keltner channels in there. Uh, I, I decided to keep the Keltners out of there. Um, I do like the Bollinger Band but I don't like having the upper and lower in there. Um, and the main reason is he drops it down as far as a standard deviation, usually you use like a two or something like that. So you can kind of get an idea of overbought and oversold, but that's not, I don't really care about that. So he uses a 0.1 standard deviation and then a, a one offset. I do like the one offset, but you don't even really need to do that. Um, and then, but I do like using the middle line, the basis. So the basis is really nice uh, telling you, you know, this right here. So this is just a, just Bitcoin here. This right here is just telling me it's in the lower half of the Bollinger Band. I don't need to see the rest of it. I just know that right now it's in sort of a bearish, bearish uh, pattern. Um, and we'll go through some of the ways I interpret this chart. But um, so there's, and I love using Darvis box. You really just need to throw Darvis box in there and just, you know, you can mess with the, the length all you want, but 
you know, looks like three would be okay. You know, I might just leave it at three. I don't know. Just kind of, you mess with it, and, and once you kind of get a feel for what you like, it's all that really matters. Um, let's see, ticks per row. So uh, what I did here was just use the volume profile. I like having volume profile. You can't see it here, but uh, let's see. Where can, there you go. So on F, just looking at F, uh, you can see the volume profile. What I like about volume profile is it's going to tell you at what price level people are spending most of the time buying and selling and then you know who's doing what so you can kind of see a, a balance of buyers and sellers and then also you get this point of control line which I really like using that as like a pivot point so if you know anything about order flow trading um, these order flow traders they like to have sort of an order flow pivot point or a point of control uh, so usually generally if you're above the point of control um, you're you're bullish for the most part you're going to just want to buy dips um, and so you want to set up your trading system whatever it is whether this is you're going to use Greg's or a version of Greg's or your own which is basically just like a 20 moving average I mean it's really you could be that easy uh, and I I've traded really well with just basically like a 10 and a 20 you know it's not that hard but um, I put this th together today because I thought it was really interesting as I was trying to figure out how to uh, do Greg's swing system on here. But anyways, the volume, I like using volume profile. Um, and so what I do is uh, I change, I go in here as the VPVR, it's under indicators, and it's under volume profile, and it's the uh, visible range version. So you can just click that, and then you come in here, you can edit it. I like to change the row layout. Instead of numbered rows, I like it to be ticks per row. Just It just looks better. And then um, I you know I mess with this kind of stuff and then here's the point of control obviously we want that to be a little bit more visible that way I know if it ever comes down here this is going to be some serious support if it breaks the support uh, you know now you're you're talking like bear market territory for you know short term so right now it's still bullish it's very bullish it's very far away from that and what it's trying to do what this tells me because it's so far down here is that um, look at the volume structure here. I'm looking at this saying, okay, where does ETH, Ethereum, want to establish its next point of control? Is it going to try to come back down here and test this? See a big gap here in volume traded. I wouldn't be surprised to see ETH come back down here sometime if it wants to fill in this little area here. Um, but if it doesn't, if it starts to start, if it sets up a new point of control up here, then I know we go higher. And I know ETH's uh, all-time high is like 1420 so my guess is it's starting to build here and uh, you know just kind of with the trend I mean you just look at it what does it look like it looks like it's going higher I'm just gonna assume it's coming higher I'm not gonna try to read too much into it but um, 1420 is going to be uh, sort of the line in the sand for F let's just see right here kind of what it's building towards right it can't, it can't just come up and just keep going and going and break all-time highs unless it's extremely bullish. Then you don't really want that either. You don't want something to just go straight up and never stop because then the crash is just crazy. You want it to kind of build. So this is what F is building. I don't know when it breaks. I don't know how it breaks. But at some point, it looks like it's going to establish a new you know, floor. Kind of what Greg talks about. It's going to establish a point of control. That way it has a new launch pad. So this looks like it's it's building right here. You can kind of see the, the crescent here, the crescent. I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but the crescendo, the the height of the, the peak of the mountain here. Uh, it's starting to build that volume uh, and eventually it's gonna establish a new point of control right there. That's my guess. And then at that point, that would be a sufficient launch point for them to try and push this up over all-time highs. This really needs to be above all-time highs if you're looking at that. Okay, so the next thing I like is this EMA cloud. All this stuff can be found in under indicators for free with TradingView. Uh, just to have this mini though, you got to have the upgraded version because you can only use, I think, five on the free one, five on the, the basic one that you pay like 15 bucks a month for, and then the $30 a month one you can have up to 10, which is if you have more than 10 indicators, you're it's probably too many, but um, the next one I love, love, love is 
the previous month, previous quarter, previous week open close, and previous day open close. I don't use the previous day open close, but I love seeing the previous monthly open, the close, open close for quarterly, open close for weekly. So that's what these lines are on here. So I can see that this yellow line right here, this is my price, which I do need to change that. Sorry guys. Uh, I'm just gonna mess with that real quick here. Where the heck is that? Uh, appearance, status line, symbol, last price line. I don't, I don't need that to be. Uh, I'm just gonna make it purple for now, because everything else is. I don't want multiple. I don't want the same color for multiple indicators. So anyway, so the blue you can see is gonna be the previous weekly open or close. I don't really care if it's the open or close. I just know that these order flow traders and people respect previous weekly opens and closes and previous daily opens and closes, previous month open closes. You can see where it broke one of these open closes here on the monthly. That's what the yellow is. And then the quarterly. So you can see it traded around this quarterly open or close. I don't know which one it is. It doesn't matter. It's just a resistance level. Um, it's just a pivot level really so I like putting that on there because it gives you some context of where you're at uh, as far as the previous week month and quarter and typically you want to be trading when you know you're at the higher end of all of that especially the last like right now F is above the last quarterly we know it's above the last quarterly um, high whether it was the open or close here the monthly is right here and then the weekly is right here so it's trading right above last week right above last month and right above last quarter um, at least their opens or closes so uh, again it's above the the order flow pivot point you saw just shift there I don't know if that's a glitch but um, and it's also above last week and that's why I think it's trying to establish okay next thing is this uh, EMA cloud uh, that's just you just type in EMA cloud it's just this one by Zambonium man great great um, it's, it's a great great indicator what I usually do is with this one is I just come in here and change it to a 1020 just to give me this little green cloud and he usually has it set for like you can almost use it like an Ishimoku cloud where you can set it like uh, so far ahead look how it'll push that um, far like 50 periods ahead kind of like a cloud like an Ishimoku cloud does but I, I use, just use it for the uh, just for the cloud just for a 1020 cloud very simple um, and just use it for close I don't know why that was on HL2 but uh, so that'll give you a nice support to kind of follow if in this market I think it's better to be following shorter moving averages in general um, because there's so many like there's so many things that are just bouncing off the tens tens and twenties uh, and and rocketing higher and that are at highs and you kind of just want to stay with those versus trying to catch things that are bouncing off the fifty the uh, the fifty day moving average or the two hundred even like Amazon uh, like uh, Nvidia just like just so annoying to deal with when they're around those fifties and two hundreds that it's just not I mean unless you're just going to sell sell premium um, trying to catch a move it's not really worth it uh, so um, I just use it very simple just to kind of give me an idea of what the trend looks like and if there's a support so obviously you could have come in here and bought this uh, and been pretty happy with that um, so next thing is just basic pivot points I just come in here and it's just this pivot point standard um, I just like having those as kind of just an idea to tell me the range that we're, we're looking at here I mean we can already see that the resistance five, it's trading up in the R3, R4 zone here from the pivot, which was way down here where that point of control is. So that's an, another thing too. You can start seeing a confluence of support right here where there's a point of control, there's a pivot, which is huge. And then you've got a, a monthly, that yellow line is a monthly open or close. I don't know which, either way, it's gonna be a support. Um, and then you've got another weekly support here, right where all that volume is. So if you are paying attention to this and you're looking at it, you can see if it comes down to this area, it's likely going to bounce. Um, if you ever get a flush or something like that on a daily where it, it, it drops, I mean, this is a great area to buy if you are long. Uh, you even have a quarterly support level here, and then you've got more pivot levels here. 
So, I mean, this just kind of tells you the bullishness that's happening here is that it's trading above all of that right now, and it's still going higher. I mean, it's come back a little bit here today, but um, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, another thing I like to use, so let me shut all that down, but another thing I like to use, it depends on what you're trading, but I'm trading crypto here. I like to use this relative strength line, which you can find in here, relative, what you gotta do is relative to SPX, use that one, and then just change it to, to Bitcoin. You can just change it to Bitcoin. And you can see it's relative strength to Bitcoin, which obviously it's correlated to. So you want to know if it's, um, and it's not making new highs right now. So it's still kind of weak. ETH is still kind of weak when it's, we're talking about uh, cryptos. Like for example, let's take Polkadot, which is ripping right now. Let's just use this as an example. Um, right now it's trading on the R4 line, which you know is either bullish or bearish, depending on how you want to look at it. I say bullish. It's trading up almost into the R5 of the pivots. And it's above the quarterly, it's above the monthly, it's above the weekly, uh, and it's way above this 1020 cloud, and it's making new highs relative to Bitcoin. So if you were gonna buy one of these coins, which would you wanna which would you rather buy? Would you rather buy ETH, which is not trading uh, at new highs versus uh, Bitcoin? I mean we got a line right here that's telling us we got the last high was right there. So you know it's it's lagging it's lagging bitcoin whereas say link for example just made a new high so you got the last high there so it, it's trading in higher it's higher highs and higher lows versus bitcoin so link is is very bullish right now it's had a little bit of a pullback there but still i mean link's uh, all-time high was like 20 so it's it's trying to break out it's trying to bust out so a good buy point I'm waiting for link I might add some more like right here you had the last high you're gonna have a 1020 you're gonna have the middle of the Bollinger Band and you're gonna have an R2 all coming together while all above all this other support and resistance that has been building over you know basically for a long time it's just kind of been trading in this little area here so does it break out I don't know and and hold I don't know but if it if it builds here and then breaks out you know it's probably real uh, next thing I love, love, love is uh, VWAP, anchored VWAP, this little guy. These things are amazing. Um, and you can use them however you want to. I like to use them at inflection points. So, for example, let's just maybe look at Polkadot, see if we can find a good place. I'll just use F, for example. Okay, so F's most recent high was right here. So what you do is you just click on this guy click on the most recent high and you can open it up and use as the source whatever you want to. I usually if I'm looking for resistance for the most recent high I just put it as the most recent high and it's going to give you kind of a a dynamic resistance line uh, VWAP and I really like using these uh, a lot of people are using them nowadays and so I like to use that. So my my guess is here is that 1248 will probably be a resistance. It, it kind of was a resistance here recently. I mean, it's already pulled back well off of that. So it wasn't able to break and hold that level. Um, and so another thing I like to use is the, the stochastic RSI because it, it's combining the RSI and stochastic together. So uh, two very good momentum indicators. And so you just, you know, you can obviously see this was already lined up to be a really good buy point was right in here and yeah, just coming right off the low there so um, it's still kind of uh, trying to break break out here we'll see if it holds and keeps going my guess is yes it's gonna eventually break this 1420 uh, all-time high but um, so this is kind of what I've been working on today just to it combines a lot of different things um, combines some of Greg's uh, you know elements um, some of my own that I've always kind of just messed around with that I like but I really like to cover all my bases when we're looking at uh, getting an idea of what an instrument is doing an asset is doing and uh, so you're combining some elements of order flow and volume profile you're combining some elements of just keeping track of uh, previous highs whether that's um, you know big picture highs and uh, you're 
uh, keeping track of just pivot levels, which is what you know order flow order flow traders are looking at pivot levels all the time, and market makers are looking at pivot levels. Uh, you're also looking at um, you know you got the Bollinger Band middle line too, which is just a measure of it's just really measure of uh it's just a, it's really just a moving average, so it's just it's nice because it's based in volatility, and then you've got relative strength, so depending on what you're trading, so. Um, I really just love this relative strength. This thing is is so nice because it's going to give you. Say we change it, change it to spy, and let's just go look at some stuff that I've been trading. Uh, let's just look at uh, maybe Fubu, Fubo, or the freak you call this thing. Here's another example of something that's uh, it's sort of on a downtrend because it's you uh, know relative to spy, it's not performing very well. This most recent high was over here. Uh, way up there actually so I mean you really don't even want to think about Fubo until it breaks this uh, this high here this would be I would set an alert here and just say okay once this breaks and holds here I know Fubo is probably going to be heading higher if the spy is going higher um, it's just going to outperform uh, the spy but it, it's looking like it's setting up it stopped right on the point of control look at that point of control level couldn't break through bounced and so Fubo is looking like it wants to go higher at some point. Uh, whether it can start outperforming SPY again, I don't know. It's at a monthly resistance. It's at a weekly resistance right here. See where it stopped. And the pivot, a, a, a mid pivot, a main pivot as well. It's not even one of these R1s or S1s. So uh, putting it all together to give you an idea of what is the strongest, most bullish um, assets out there. Right now, I'm really loving this polka dot just because there's no overhead at all. So all, all these other resistances are all way down here. It's it's really outperforming. This is still SPY, but it's obviously outperforming SPY in Bitcoin. Uh, this is where you'd want to have your money at least if you can move it there. For some reason, on some of these charts, the volume profile doesn't actually show. But uh, I'd be looking at polka dot right now. On pullbacks pullbacks or if you're looking at the stochastic waiting for it to come down here and set across and go up but uh, yeah very interesting uh, let me know what you think about this guys um, I, I know I promised some of you I would do the quant but I started putting it together and I just really could not figure out how to get the tick chart work and, and then I found out you can't actually do it so forget about the quant <laughs> Uh, for now, at least with TradingView, um, you know, uh, I would, I would, I will definitely do another video showing you some intraday uh, styles, and uh, maybe we can put together something here that uh, that includes some of Greg's elements for the intraday type stuff, for the scalping and things like that. So, anyways, thanks a lot. Leave a like, subscribe, uh, and uh, leave your comments below. Tell me what you think. Bye.